The invention of instant replay. Tony Verna was a producer of television, sports, and entertainment blockbusters. He was born on November 26, 1933, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tony Verna's broadcast sign was an ability to continually come up with advances in the use of cameras. Tony Verna produced five Super Bowls, the Olympics, the Kentucky Derby, and even the Live Aid concert in 1985. Instant Replay was the brainchild of Tony Verna. He was a young CBS producer and Philadelphia citizen who understood that replaying an old video, a technology then used mainly for important news events, would be popular for sports broadcasts. It all began on December 7, 1963, Army and Navy showdown in their annual football game, then as now one of the sport's biggest rivalries. In the fourth quarter, Army quarterback Carlos Stichwe faked a handoff and ran in the end zone for a touchdown. Army fans were delighted at home with the play, but then a strange occurrence happened. Stichwe faked the handoff and ran in the end zone, somehow inverting the very rules of that sport. The event was so confusing that Lindsey Nelson, play-by-play instructor for the broadcast, had to explain to the crowd that the event wasn't live. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army did not score again, she said. They lost the game, but Instant Replay, a remodeling that would change sports forever, was born. The technology of Instant Replay allows access to all events around the world. The design of this technology is used by many people, but it has been a key part of the sports world. Instant replay has provided major help for referees' missed calls. This has even changed the outcome of games. Instant replay using technology to increase the credibility of the game. The impact instant replay has had on sports cannot be debated. Its usefulness in ruling on specific plays is always highly debatable. The evolution of instant replay has evolved drastically over the years to assist in in in-game changing calls in all sports. Instant replay fixes the correctable errors and everyone gets back on the field as if nothing happened. This has been helping the athletes in the field inside the game. Instant replay has, been, has had the ability to enhance sports while also ruining them. The idea started in 1963. Tony Verna imagined an instant in-game replay that allowed the television audience to experience more of what he was seeing in the director's booth. Instant replay quickly became noticeable in sports broadcasting and Verna's invention gave fans a new way to look at games. This had given a chance for fans of all sport fan bases a chance to have their separate opinion from the call given during the game. Tony Verna took his idea not only to benefit fans and audiences, but also to improve sports broadcasting. The invention of instant replay would very well live up to its expectations and shock the eyes of many throughout the sports world. One of the most controversial post-ruling in NFL history helped send the team to the Super Bowl after the team's quarterback trudged off the snowy field, resigning and fumbling the game without a hint of a challenge. In the AFC Championship game on January 19, 2002, Oakland's Charlie Woodson sacked a New England's quarterback, Tom Brady, for a turnover with a minute and 50 seconds left, and the Raiders leading 13-10. All the Raiders had to do was run the clock out to advance to the Super Bowl, but after an instant replay, the officials of the game decided to cite an obscure stipulation called the tuck rule. They ended up ruling that Brady's arm was coming forward when he was hit, which made the ruling on the field an incomplete pass instead of a fumble. This enabled the Patriots to kick a tying field goal and eventually win in overtime. New England, not Oakland, went to the Super Bowl and ultimately won it. There has always been several arguments against instant replay being used in sports mainly because it delays crucial parts of a close game. The momentum of an intense match with a close score is what makes sports so exhilarating and memorable. And stopping the game can easily lose the enthusiasm the game contains. Throughout the 21st century, instant replay has been seen all over popular leagues in North America, like the NHL, NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball, as well as internationally throughout many European soccer leagues. If the invention of instant replay is used correctly, Instant replay for sports are a great addition to sports. The official's job is to call the most precise play possible, and with the common human error in today's game, the use of instant replay is crucial to ensure the game is being played properly. Since Tony Verna introduced instant replay, many calls have been overturned, providing a more fair game by reducing errors that the referee may have made. Most people think of the delays instant replay causes instead of how it's helped the players and teams.
If you look at the psychological effects of instant replay, you will see that success on the field and court often occurs because of game flow and momentum. Some of these factors might be compromised when instant replays occur. The average baseball game takes around 3 hours. Baseball is one of the sports that takes a very long time to play compared to basketball and soccer. Most people who watch Major League Baseball are always complaining that the replays are too long and, pref and would prefer the M fire to continue the game. In the end, in the end, instant replay is one of the worst and best things your team can ask for. Was it either the one getting fouled or the team giving the foul? After Tony Verna's invention, many TV channels such as CBS Sports picked up on this. On December 7, 1963, Demarius Thomas intercepted a pass from Painting Manning. He ran along the sideline until he got to the opponent's scoreline where he scored and made a 14-6 lead against the Broncos. Several minutes later, CBS Sports replayed the touchdown seven times. After that, there were a total of 147 replays shown, and the Broncos won with a 28-20 lead. Television's ability to review plays at the push of a button has transformed how we watch sports, how sports are analyzed, coached, and covered increasingly and how games are officiated and who wins and who loses. The invention of instant replay allows us to capture multiple moments in which players playing sports did fantastic stuff, such as the first player to dunk, the first player to run through the whole defense, the first home run ever hit, and the iconic goal from that Roberto Carlos scored from 40 yards out at a fantastic speed of 136.7 miles per hour. So what if Tony Verna created instant replay? He modernized and changed the way we play sports. He allowed many sports to be more fair and lowered the percentage of false calls. Tony Verna's invention has 100% accuracy and over 10,000 games have been more clear and unbiased decisions. Today, instant replays play involves home run, potential home run, interference, fan interference, and boundary calls in Major League Baseball. After this invention, every coach had an opportunity to challenge a call in case they thought it was biased. In tennis, this invention is used to see if the ball went out of bounds to see which team the point belongs to. In cricket, instant replay is used to determine decisions on runouts, stumping, and doubtful catches. And finally, it is used in the National Hockey League to allow referees to make more accurate calls on illegal hits. Football, football is a sport where instant replay is contained in a way that has limited use. Coaches are allowed to challenge two calls during the game, which ensures that coaches will not challenge every call. If instant replay shows that the call on the field... I think they never liked. Um, that the, goes back the first instant play, replay was a college game. That, that, if I had to do it again, I probably would do it on an NFL game because it cost me a lot of grief. Um, Roger Staubach was called Roger the Dodger in those days. He was the Annapolis quarterback. The play I showed was from Raleigh Stitchway, who was the Army quarterback, an unknown. Well, I had hoped that Slovak would do one of his scrambles and I could show it, you know, with some cause and effect to it or whatever. But it, every time his one of his plays came up, the thing didn't work. And Stitchway, who, uh, if, you, if you got in touch with, he'd tell you after the game was over, people asked him about scoring again. I mean, it was, yeah, he'll actually tell you because, you know, obviously his family was watching closely. And, um, but he, he's quoted as saying all that, you know. Well, it changed how you view a game because you want to see the, the what happened. You want to just put it in context with the game. Um, and if you, if you watch the game today without replays, you, you, you know, would be more than unhappy. I mean, it wouldn't be complete coverage. Because your replays now are not from the same angle. Even the first one wasn't the same angle. It was a tighter lens. Replays today are a lot of isolated cameras. I turned the, they call ISO. I, um, I don't know if I started it, but I used to call them isolate, isolate these cameras. And they, and a lot of things are done because cameras are isolated. In baseball, they isolate, um, if you're a right-handed hitter, they isolate the shortstop and third baseman because chances are it's going to be that way. You see what I mean? There's all kinds of patterns. In the, in the Kentucky Derby these days, they don't have one camera trying to figure out the winner. They've got 10, 
10 uh, ISO cameras or something, you know what I mean? But that's all okay. I mean, anything that makes it easier for the viewer, that's what it's all about.